Gather round, everyone. Tis case study time. Um, I was going through a list of our highest performing e-commerce clients. And this is anecdotal, but four out of five of them have dog ugly websites. <laughs> and hopefully they never watch this video. But they're actually really bad. Um, and, and, and let me just make a disclaimer. They're not non-functional. These are functional sites. Site speed is at least adequate. You can tell where things are. Value propositions are clear. Um, sometimes clearer, to be honest with you. Um, and that speaks to why I think that this actually might be a good thing. But um, aesthetically, the design is not great. And in 80% of these cases, it's actually, I would call, I would call them ugly, ugly websites. Um, they're ugly sites. And yet they're among our highest performing. Now, correlations and causation, I'm the first one to admit that. But I do think there's something there. I think there's something, and, and, and I've been thinking a little bit about this. I'm going to traverse a couple of levels of analysis. The first one is just this, the, the user psychology. Um, I can see in, in some of these sites, two of them are, are pretty niche. Um, one of them is agrarian products and the other one is uh, medical devices. Um, and both of them, again, are <laughs> not good looking websites. Um, and they're in an in industry where their competitors have, at least some of the competitors have more aesthetically pleasing websites. However, I think that I can could I could see their user base, I could see their consumer base, assuming that, and when I say ugly, they just feel a little outdated. But assuming that an outdated website means a couple of things, it means you've been around for a while, number one. Number two, it might actually indicate a lack of sophistication. And if you're buying from someone that has, you know, a, shown lack of sophistication in terms of online marketing, maybe they don't have the margins that other people have, or maybe they're selling it at a better price, or you know, maybe they've been around longer, maybe they're the mom and pop. So I think that there's a psychological aspect to the ugly website, number one. Number two, new level of analysis. Ugly websites have permission to do more. With the aesthetically pleasing websites, you're constantly trying to stay inside of the brand guidelines and nobody can use this color on this. And I'm not saying, I'm not bashing brand guidelines and I'm not bashing aesthetics, bashing aesthetics, even though I'm not good at it at all. Um, but, you know, like the isolation effect, for instance, with the very clear call to action or, or really highlighting the value proposition or making uh, the descriptions of products ultra clear, like on an aesthetically pleasing website, you have to find a way to do that and, and, and stay with the whole feng shui thing of the website. And with ugly websites, it's like, bam, this is where it works the best. This is where we're putting it. And where I can't, for obvious reasons, expose my clients' ugly websites to you, I would encourage you to go look at some of the higher performing e-commerce websites. And by the way, I think Amazon fits in this category. I think Amazon is ugly. I think Walmart.com is ugly. And interestingly, I think Target is more aesthetically pleasing than Walmart. And Walmart.com is like, on, on the significant rise and, and uptick and uh, Target ends up being a little bit harder to use in my experience. Um, ugly e-commerce might be the way to go. And, and, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, am I the only one that's kind of figured this out? And so I just Googled, do ugly websites convert better? And I ended up on this great blog, The Daily Egg. Um, that's, I think that's, is this Neil Patel's thing? I bet you it is. Crazy Egg is Neil Patel. Um, but here's somebody talking about, what's this? Uh, Dale. Dale here is talking about why ugly websites convert better in some cases. Um, I'm going to include a link to this blog because I just, I, and, you know, he cites, what is this? Craigslist, obviously, DMOZ, WiseGeek, um, Drudge Report. I think these are really good examples. Uh, now, this isn't me telling you to go and intentionally make your website ugly, but I do want to, I do want to meditate on the fact that 80%, and that's unfair for me to say because I just looked at the top five. So of the top five of my highest performing clients, four out of five of them have ugly websites. Websites that you would look at and, you know, and they're not definitely not going to win any awards and they feel like a little outdated or not aesthetically pleasing or, you know, it's not like a graphic designer watching every little thing. Now, they're all functional. Um, they're all mobile responsive. You know, they, they, they all, there's nothing technically wrong with them. Um, they're just not appealing to look at. I think the freedom of an ugly website in terms of being able to do anything that you want to do. Um, I also think maybe some of the, maybe some of the confusion that can be caused by an overemphasis on aesthetics. Um, because, you know, we spend way too much time on, um, you know, the, 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 the media or the flow or whatever. Sometimes it's, it's hard to know, like, well, what is it that I'm supposed to do? Um, 
I think that an ugly website frees you up. So I'm not telling you to go out there and, and build an ugly website to build an ugly website. But what I am telling you is I've got the data to show that function exceeds form 80% of the time, which I think is, I think it's a fair statement. Um, I'd love if somebody wants to challenge me on that. I know there's a bunch of you story brand people out there that are like shooting pellets at my face right now or something. I uh, would love to hear the dissenting view, but right now that's where I live and, 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 and I'm sticking to it. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know we actually know what we're doing. We shoot a video every single day. So if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any input, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We get very little human interaction. Thanks for supporting our channel and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.